I'm uh, Dr. Tali Weiss. Uh, I'm an innovation research researcher and a partner of Cointrapish uh, Marketing Communication. Uh, and you have discussed very intensely the, the challenges, the operational ch challenges of marketing. Uh, but I'm interested to understand uh, how do you um, how do you come with uh, new ideas for innovating in your market and how marketing uh, is done, knowing that the globally the economy is not doing so well still, and the competition is getting stronger. Uh, how do you all, all the panelists compete in this uh, struggle with this uh, idea? Just to keep us on, on, on the same topic of, uh, of the panel and connected to your question, I think what it will be interesting to hear is, do you scale innovation? Right, Because you have very smart people working for you. They are the most, uh, in some cases at least, the most precious resource. So do you have any ideas on how or any process internally on the way that you are scaling innovation, the way that you're looking at the market and reducing the effort required to do that? I think that's, that will be more connected to the specific topic that we are discussing. Start with the big boys. <laughs> well, I, I'll answer that uh, in regards to uh, marketing innovation, if you will. And not about uh, necessarily product innovation or solution innovation, which is a completely different uh, topic. Uh, uh, I think um, the basic answer is, uh, is uh, providing um, the, the right setting for the people and um, to motivate people within the marketing organization uh, to be open and to constantly learn to be in a learning mode because I think you, you, you innovate when, when you are exposed when you are triggered when you are angry when you are looking for new things and it's very difficult to to say wh where innovation or new ideas are coming from. It could come from from anything. It could come from an idea. It could come from a, an article that you have read. It could come from a discussion that you've done with the a, with a peer within the company or or in a forum like this. It could come from a, an event that you have attended. Uh, uh, from my point of view, is to to make sure that the conditions for my people are there to be constantly triggered and engaged and to welcome, of course, new ideas. So from, from my point of view, I, I, I set for my people uh, objectives to learn and to come with, that, with ideas. And uh, I, I reward more, I would say, the people that are, are more innovative, are, that are more challenging, that are coming with new ideas about technology or a different approach to do a campaign. Um, so, setting setting the stage, setting this as an objective, rewarding people that are more innovative, that are provi promoting innovation. innovation. Excuse me. Do you measure innovation? Um, I don't measure innovation. Uh, I don't have kind of a scale to measure innovation, but sometimes you, it's sense. You, you could sense from your people who is more innovative, who is driving uh, uh, new ideas about uh, changing processes, coming with new thoughts of about a campaign, the way uh, different methods to, to, to drive your, your solutions, new technologies. You just see who is more, more innovative and who is less innovative. Not, not all ideas, of course, are valid or valuable, but I prefer to, to say uh, nine times no to 10 ideas than to, say, than to just uh, have no discussion about innovation or new ideas with, uh, with other people. I don't really like the question, do you scale innovation? Because that's like saying, do you scale creativity? Do you measure creativity? Do you measure? It, it, I, don't, I don't see really how you can, and I wouldn't want to. I think if you want to, then you might actually get less innovation and creativity. We're talking a lot about KPIs. I know innovation is not creativity, but to me, asking do you measure innovation, do you measure creativity, that's a similar kind of question to me. And um, we're obviously all in technology, and we all f 
see ourselves as, as representing innovative companies and as being innovative and all about innovation and it's part of our DNA. Um, and, and we're looking for ways all the time to do things differently and to come up with new products and Israel in general is known for this. But to ask, do you scale innovation? Do you measure? That, that, that's a yeah, I guess. But I like what you said about um, encouraging it, because it, for every good idea, there's 10 bad ideas. And if you're not open to the bad ideas and to, that, to the occasional mistake with it, to start something that is a flop and is terrible, nobody likes it, you kill it and you move on, then, then you're not going to get to the good stuff. And so you have to do that. The, the other thing is there's that Picasso quote about copying copying others, the greatest artists you copy it or something, I don't, I'm misquoting him completely, but I <laughs> pay attention to our competitions, I, I pay very close attention to our competition and I copy their ideas and I start from there and it ends up being very different in the end but that's a good place to look for, for inspiration and any place, I mean a place like this is good to look for inspiration, right? But you, you, you need to be open to, to it all the time, that's I guess what I can add. Uh, so I, I'll try and add a few uh, new ideas to what my colleagues here have said, which I agree with most of uh, what we've heard. Um, and, and I'll treat your question a little more freely than uh, do we scale innovation, but uh, more on how, how do we encourage innovation, how we do more innovation. Um, one of the common definitions of insanity is repeating the same actions and expecting a different result every time. And I think that's, that's key uh, to what you're doing. If uh, your average blog post gets six likes on Facebook, five of them are from your employees and one from your mother-in-law, you're doing something wrong, okay? Your friend in Facebook of your mother-in-law. Your, your friend of your mother-in-law on Facebook, that's what you're doing wrong, exactly. <laughs> uh, first of all, unfriend her, and now you're stuck <laughs> with five likes, and now what? Um, but seriously, uh, I'll just give a few quick examples to, to open your minds, guys. Um, so there's one thing that we hated uh, at Panaya, and don't take this the wrong way, it's the, the term best practices. Because best practices just means that everyone is doing them, so they're not the best anymore, right? Everyone is doing them. So if you're looking for the document for best practices for email marketing, please do, first of all. It's a great start. But it, it's not enough to just follow those, okay? Uh, and when uh, my colleagues here talked about encouraging uh, creativity, I'll give you just a couple of ideas from some amazing stuff we did at uh, Panaya. We were wondering uh, how can we go to trade shows that uh, in the last year at Panaya we did 40. That's four zero trade shows. I know you're doing more, but you can only dream about doing 40 right now. But 40 is, is, a, is a good number of, of trade shows. And we were spending a few millions of dollars. About 50% of Panaya's marketing budget is directly attributed to events. That's 50%. That's a lot. It's a big part of the budget. And instead of going to a trade show, being there for three days, coming back with two or 300 business cards, we, we dared to dream and we said, what can we do to come back with 1,000 or 2,000 business cards or scans of leads from a trade show? And we put our minds to it. And I'll tell you in a minute, in, in a nutshell, what we did. But the next trade show, we came back with 3,000 leads from the same booth. It's a small booth. It was 10 by 20 feet or 3 by 6 meters for us Israelis. Uh, we came back with 3,000 leads. And one of the last trade shows we went to uh, last year, we came back with 4,500 leads. Um, in a not huge booth with uh, a single digit number of staff people at the booth. And th the idea was there just to turn the booth into a lead generation machine. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details because uh, Batchen knows I've got a 90-minute workshop on that that she will gladly promote if you ask her when's the next one. I think it's in June. Um, but that's one idea. And then a couple of years later, um, I came to my Marcom team. Um, one of the key people in my Marcom team at Panaya was the marketing automation specialist. If you think that's a luxury, then you won't be able to survive for long. You need a marketing automation specialist on your marketing team. I came to him and I came to my Marcom manager and I said, look guys, We've been going to the same trade shows for four years now. We're scanning pretty much the same people. We're the best at scanning them. We come back with two, three thousand leads, but we're scanning the same people every year. Now, 
I have to be there because it raises awareness, and if I disappear, my competition will make a field day out of it. Uh, but I want to get more out of the trade show. I want to know amongst the 5,000 people walking around the trade show when the decision makers that I want to meet are walking through my booth. They'll usually hide their badges. They don't want to talk to us. They just want to see what's new, and they don't want a, a salesperson to, to sit on their shoulder and start selling them. But I want to identify as if I had a GPS on every decision maker walking the show floor. I want to know when they're in my booth. So a month later, they came back to me, and they said, look, we have an idea. And two months later, we developed uh, an iPad application that we called the DM Magnet, short for Decision Maker Magnet. Again, without going to all the details, but that has facilitated hundreds of meetings with decision makers, which we accurately identify as they walk into the booth. And we're able to identify those 100 decision makers from the 2,900 non-decision makers that walk into the booth. And so with those 100 people, we send them aside to talk to a salesperson, and the other 2,900, we send them uh, uh, with the local host, they get a teddy bear, we send them on to have a nice day. So I, I know I'm, I'm putting a lot of mystery into this, but this is real stuff, and, and I talk about this in a different workshop. Um, what I'm trying to say is, just like Yaniv said, um, I'm willing to hear nine bad ideas for that one brilliant idea, and you have to create a culture that encourages innovation. If you tell people off, if you, if you call their ideas stupid, which I don't think I've ever done, um, at least not to the face of anyone, if you <laughs> tell someone that he has a stupid idea, he will not come up with the next idea, okay? And the 10th idea could be a great one. You have to encourage trial and error. Uh, there are ways to estimate how a campaign's going to do, okay? Uh, we're all uh, in the business of writing content for content marketing. I've had ideas that I thought would do well, and they were a flop, okay? And I've had ideas that I originally didn't really believe in, but they brought in 4,000 leads in a single email blast. So you really have to leave a lot of room for trial and error with time, okay? And this is experience. You learn what gives you a better chance of succeeding in an email content piece or at a trade show scheme, what giveaway will work, uh, what kind of email people are going to respond to, what kind of webinar is going to draw the people and what not. But it's all about testing and encouraging that uh, innovation spirit and bringing the people that you think they have that flair in their eye. Okay, If you're going to bring someone that's been doing the same brochures for 10 years now, just like Yaniv said, it's not the right set of skills that we're looking for in today's marketing team. We have, I, I totally agree with what Yaniv said about bringing someone who is interdisciplinary. Well, that's a long word, isn't it? Who can um, really do a bunch of different things, who's done some messaging, some email marketing, maybe a bit of Twitter, um, done some trade shows. What he doesn't know, we'll, we'll teach him to, to know. But uh, it has to be someone willing to experiment, to not be afraid to innovate, and really encourage that within your team. I think that's the, the key point. Just to take off on this point, I, I think really the most important thing is, as you said, culture. Most organizations that uh, that I've met, also in my, my, my professional life before Puff the Media, were not very tolerant to mistakes. They call it mistakes. Okay, It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake to invest X amount of money on something that didn't bring back the, the ROI. It's something that you're doing in order to look at the long run and increase and improve your and optimize your resources, OK? And I know why you're smiling. Um, no, I was just thinking mm. about a different term. Which is? It's a missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. <laughs> OK, we are closing to, uh, uh, we're getting closer to the end of the panel. And what I really would like us to cover now are your three top tips for people here in the audience, people who see the videos, uh, we will hopefully generate something like 10,500 different blog posts about this event. Uh, so the three uh, specific tips that you can give, from each from, from your own position, uh, to companies that are struggling with the challenge of scaling their marketing organization. Would you like to start? start? Wow. Why don't I do one, and then we'll do three rounds, because I'm not going to come up with three now. Um, no, it's three altogether. It's three altogether. <laughs> um, but it, just to take off. To, to take off where I left off um, is after reading everything your competition is doing, like Daniela said, and after reading all the best practices, which I joked about, but I do read all of them, of course, and I read every piece of literature out there on what we're doing, think of something that 
hasn't been done yet. Think of something that hasn't been done yet. It goes back to the, my definition of insanity. It's not my definition, but if, if you want different results from what the be best practices are doing, you have to do something unusual, something remarkable. Think crazy, okay? When we go to an IT show, our booth isn't blue and gray that looks like a, a data sheet exploded on the back wall with 20 bullets that no one's going to read because they're going to be obstructed by people standing there anyway. We do something like an orange robot standing on the, on the booth, okay? Do something different. Stand out. Don't be afraid to look childish. Don't be afraid to do something that no one's ever done before. Um, okay, I'll say my three. Well, yeah, I'll still say my three. Uh, time. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I think the first thing is have a plan. Even if you change, and you will change the plan every other week, but have a plan, a long-term plan, a quarterly plan, a yearly plan, and you'll change it, and you'll change it. But if you don't have a plan, then you're just sort of working in a vacuum without knowing where you're headed. And so um, that's very important, a plan and a, and a plan of how to execute it. Um, I guess I have examples for that you might call growth hacking. I didn't really think of them under that uh, umbrella. I love barter. I barter for email lists with other startups that have similar types of lists that I do. It's great. It's, it's free, right? <laughs> and it's a resource. It saves me money. It's, it's a win-win. So, of course, that's another think of the win-win. Um, always ask for a discount. There's a study <laughs> in the state. We're in Israel. Goes We're in Israel. Again. Yeah, but when you're talking... Well, whatever price you put there, right? you ask for a discount. Always, <laughs> always ask for a discount. There's a study in the state. Give me a discount. Right. Cost me money. <laughs> There's a study that shows uh, there's a, something called a good guy discount. Um, some economists started going into stores to buy stuff, and every time they, he made it to the checkout, and he would say, is there a good guy discount? I'm a good guy. And uh, one out of five times, you got a discount. So um, I, I have to say my ratio is better than one out of five. It's not, you know, it's probably two out of five, but it's always important. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's important. And of course, automate and measure as much as you can, but not at the expense of creativity. And so I think to be a, a good marketer, you have to have um, a combination of creativity, qualitative and quantitative together. And sometimes some people forget that. And all, all they want to think about is measuring. But what are you measuring? It has to be compelling. It has to be interesting. It has to be um, attractive to your target audience. And so that's, I don't know if that was three, but give or take. I have a note. Another tip. Okay. Okay. Outside the planet. If you want a good plan, you need, you need a good strategy. True. Yeah. Of course. I wonder how many companies here and in Israel got a real strategy. That's true. I think 20%. What do you mean by real? Real marketing strategy. No, real company strategy. No, real marketing strategy. No, we're talking about I'm not talking to you. We are talking here about marketing, not about this. Okay? Yeah, but that's, that's one of the saddest. Just, I just want to say that. That's one of the. In Israel, we have marketing strategy and then the plan. And the plan is going to be changed in much, much more times, many more times than it would if you wouldn't have a strategy. I agree. A, a plan. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. no one is going for strategy because it costs money. It costs. It's the it's the more difficult. Uh, it's the more the strategy. So you're saying that a strategy is critical, and of course that's true. At, at Kula Data, the plan is an execution of a strategy, um, and and you're right. The strategy is critical. The strategy might also change. I can say that my plan changes, but the strategy so far has not in the last six months or so. But I'm I don't you know I don't know that. The, the strategy is the tougher one of the two. The, the plan, and that's why, well, and that's why you're saying people might not have it because they, they don't know how to get it or they, they don't have the, the right thinking for it and they can't afford to pay someone to help them with it. I don't necessarily think a strategy is expensive because I think the best strategy is one that comes from within the company and not, as one, not from an, an, you know, a consultant. Of course, you could get a strategy from a consultant. Many people do, strat that's what strategy consulting is all about. But that's sort of... But that's a whole other discussion. But anyway, the comment was about strategy. I want to change because the plan is much focused, much more focused, yeah. much, and is much better if you have a strategy. 
very cost effective in the end of the way. Thank you for buying me more time to come up with my two other tips. Uh, so here they are. One of them is start small before you scale, uh, and that goes directly to what we're talking about scaling. I'll just give an example to make it concrete so it doesn't sound like a cliche. Um, the best content that worked for us at Panaya was created either for free or next to free. Start with something small with a great idea, and if that works, then scale it and try to do similar things and try and understand why it worked and do more of those and translate into a gazillion languages like Yaniv needs to and, and uh, make it a good cultural fit for everything. So start small. If it works, it'll be very easy for you to justify the budget, okay? If you, if you write a content piece for 500 bucks and it works extremely well, you'll be able to get another 5,000 and after that another 25,000 bucks to do more content. That's one thing. And the, the last tip I have for you is hire the best people money can buy. You will not regret it, okay? If you have to cut down on your program's budget to hire a more expensive, more experienced, more senior person that you think could do a better job, it's well worth the money, okay? Uh, you should be paying whatever <laughs> a senior marketing person that you think is a good fit for your organization wants and they will be able to multiply that investment by 10 or 100 fold and do amazing things. If you bring five mediocre people just because that's the budget you have, you're not gonna get what you wanna get out of them. That's my last tip. Actually, I have one tip, but uh, I'm forced to, to add two others, so. Uh, so first of all, of course, I, I will start with a cliche, of course, uh, mm -hmm. have, uh, uh, the must is have a winning team. And I think we, we've covered what needs to be done in order to have a, a winning team. Uh, and I, I totally agree uh, with all the comments uh, in regards to that, and it's a lot of the focus. And I've said about uh, the, the the new sk skill set, interdisciplinary. And uh, I, I've read something that I, I found very very interesting. If you have like one hundred dollars uh, to invest in a new technology, so put one dollar in the technology, or ten dollars in the technology, and ninety dollars in the right person to do something with this smart technology. Um, um, I will skip the second one and I'll go <laughs> straight to the third one <laughs> because uh, it's already been mentioned. Um, again, it's, it's coming from a, a, a context of, of a large company and uh, in a large company you have uh, sometimes a lot of overhead and bureaucracy and you need to all, all the time to present what you're doing and to monitor and to justify and it, it, it took me a while to understand that uh, not only this is a necessity uh, uh, eventually th that's the that, that's the right way in a large company to justify and to get the budget you cannot avoid that and and for me the 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 the, the, the tip is uh, Again, you need to show the value, and this is the way to show the value in a large company. Uh, you need to really earn your budget. You need to earn the budget. You need to justify your existence. You need to justify whatever you do. And it's a more of a, a soft tip. Don't fight it. Embrace it. Hmm. Just embrace it. First of all, it will, it will make your life easier. You will sleep better at nights. <laughs> you will have less conflicts with your management, and <laughs> maybe, maybe you will be able to maintain your budget. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe. And would you like to give your uh, your input? Would you like to give your input? Um, I wanted to add that um, uh, measurements are extremely um, difficult to measure, and um, so I wanted to start small. Then uh, some rule can be. Measure only the things that you can act upon. So if you don't have the budget to uh, redesign your website, so think think about what you're going to measure about your website. Because if you're not going to have the budget to act on the changes, then you, so you need to then make after the measurements. You don't start measuring those changes at all. So if you can only you know change some graphics, so put them in the event in your analytics and only change the Measure only the buttons, then change them. But don't measure the entire website if you can't change it. That will help you measure things you can then activate them and then start small and then grow. I would just for, just for, uh, for the video's sake, I just want to repeat that's an amazing point, because one of the biggest challenges is you can measure so many things today that you can measure things that are not necessarily relevant. And the point is if you can't 
uh, if you need to start from 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 day zero, measure things you can actually change tomorrow, and don't spend time on trying to build this amazing measurement framework uh, that in the end of the day you don't have to, you, you will not be able to act upon it uh, through the process. We've also wrote about it, some content in our website regarding in our blog regarding revenue attribution that says exactly the same thing. Find attribute revenues to things that you can actually impact because. If you cannot impact something, who cares that you attribute the revenue to it? Um, so just to, uh, to summarize the points, point number one was hack the process, right? Read what, everything, what everybody else are doing, learn it by heart, and then find a way to do something different, right? Uh, point number two, ask for discounts. OK, very important. Point number three, start small before scaling. Very important point as well. Uh, point number four. Hire the best people money can buy. Uh, does uh, Yotbo hiring now? We are, actually. We're hiring uh, for marketing, sales, and developers. Which means that whatever you thought you should ask for, add 15% to it. Um, and then get real. 50, yeah. <laughs> and that's, and, and that's uh, <laughs> then, <laughs> then they will ask for a discount. <laughs> I'm going to follow her advice. Um, and two most important points, earn your budget and embrace reality. Um, I would like to thank you guys. It was an amazing panel. Can yes? Yes, of course. I was thinking about the, uh, the que your question about innovation. I really don't mean this as a plug. We have a webinar next week <laughs> <laughs> with a guy called Jonathan w McDonald. W no, no, no. You'll, you'll find it. It's on the homepage. But there's a guy called Jonathan McDonald who has something called the Thought Expansion Network. He's British. And he's all about the kinds of things you were asking about. It's next uh, Wednesday, I think, in the evening. If anyone's interested in innovation, and you specifically, I think you'd enjoy it. Okay, so I think what we will do, first of all, we are posing for us as if it's a selfie. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, as as me. Oh, then, well, I can think about a couple of other people that are missing as well. <laughs> That's true. Um, all the, the, the points that were discussed will appear on our blog, but also if any of the panelists, and by the way, any of the members, any of the people here would like us to add links to the th email that we're going to send after the event for things that you guys are doing um, and so on, Send us the information we're going to send by the end of the week. And also, of course, panelists, if you have anything specific you'd like us to, uh, to put in the email as well. I'd like to thank you all for being here. And uh, the bar is still open. We still have drinks. Uh, so enjoy the rest of the evening.